Um, first of all, uh, before I begin, um, just want to let you guys know that the Lynx offices are actually at 100 Helming Street. So Raymond, I need to tell you, I have absolutely seen the progress you guys have made. Um, it's, the traffic's been a lot better. Uh, walking around is, is certainly, uh, there's certainly progress there. There's still a lot of work to go. Uh, but we certainly uh, are appreciative of the work that you guys have done. Um, I actually look forward to also seeing that park in front of uh, LME East develop. It'll, it'll give me another place to eat lunch. Okay, so um, as mentioned, I'm uh, with the Lynx Management, so I'll just jump into my presentation right now. Before I begin, I actually want to give you guys an overview of the Lynx. Many of you guys have probably heard of what we do. We're the first REIT listed in Hong Kong uh, in 2005. Um, but more importantly, I want to emphasize the fact that number one, we are 100% owned by investors and private, uh, by institutional and private investors. The government does not have a stake in the link. The other thing I want to emphasize is that we have about 182 properties with a total IFA of about 11 million square feet throughout Hong Kong. That means we have about 9% of all of Hong Kong's retail facilities. Um, and we're located mainly around housing estates. So that means we're also very close to the general community. We're pretty much a major part of uh, Hong Kong. The next slide shows you a map of where our property is located. If you take a look, uh, we're located very close to the MTR stations and the railways. Um, very dense public population, uh, very dense uh, populations. And we do play a very key role in terms of walkability. A lot of people pass through our shopping centers, go through our areas every day either to shop, um, either just to get to transportation. Uh, we are part of their lives. So I'm going to take another step and explain a little bit about how we do business at the link, because this actually is actually part of how we do um, some of the initiatives that I'll show you uh, in the next few slides. First of all, our business is driven around our sustainability initiatives. Over here, you can see we have seven different aspects that we've identified. And these are the core areas that we feel we need to make sure that we excel in. Um, the next slide will give you an idea. Our business model, we do asset management, property management, no, um, nothing new or out of the ordinary there. Uh, but we also do asset enhancement and asset development. So revitalization, that's a key initiative that we're working on. Some of you may be familiar with some of the properties we've uh, worked on, uh, namely Lok Fu, uh, Stanley Plaza, uh, Longcheng, and uh, Wang Taizin. Uh, we also look at asset investments. Our vision is to become a world-class real estate investor uh, and manage serving and improving the lives of those around us. The key there is improving the lives of those around us. Okay? Therefore, we believe that sustainability is good for those around us, and hence, it's good for our own business. You can see from the slide here, of the seven aspects, we also have um, key targets and objectives uh, for each of those aspects of what to achieve how can we move forward when we're uh, figuring out how to, how to develop our business. Okay, so let's get into this discussion, uh, the, the presentation itself. Hong Kong and the fresh market. Wet markets, fresh markets have always been an integral part of Hong Kong. That's where we collab, that's where we communicate, that's where community people meet up, you purchase daily goods, you meet friends, you meet neighbors, um, and you do business. This is a picture about the 1900s, late 1890s, central wet market. We progressed to about the 1950s, Kowloon City Street. Uh, it's another fresh market, mainly on the street. And then jump into about 1970s, you can see another picture of um, Ping, uh, Ping Sek. So the uh, wet market over in Ping Sek. 1980s, another one over um, Peiho Street. Okay, so wet markets have evolved over the last almost 100 years, and they still remain a very key part of our community. So what I want to show you now is something more recent, fresh markets of today and what they look like. Looks the same as what it did in the 1980s. Okay, there's a few adjustments, not much, but in general, the concept of wet market hasn't changed much. Okay. And that's one of the key challenges that we have at the link. We have about 95 uh, wet markets that we have to work with. Um, one thing that we like to discuss, or, or I actually like to joke about, is when we look at wet markets, what do you think of? What are the words you first start thinking of? 
dirty, dingy, wet, smelly, unhygienic, unenvironmentally friendly. I don't want to go there. I'd rather go to a supermarket and a shopping center. Okay. That's the public perception. And it's fair to say that's pretty accurate in most cases. But we also have 95, 94, 95 of these fresh markets in our portfolio. So from a business perspective, that's a risk. If people don't want to do businesses in a wet market, or if people don't want to come to a wet market, that's not good for our business either. So we start on our new process, the Tai Yun experience. Tai Yun is our first wet market to undergo a reno uh, renovation or revitalization process. I'm actually going to show you a quick video, which will give you a little bit of background about Tai Yun and also what we did. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be sound. Well, it should be sound. So you can see a lot of the wet markets, this is what they look like. Nothing different, nothing out of the ordinary. This is our new design for Tai Yun wet market.
Okay, so let me give some facts and figures about Taiyuan wet market itself. Um, the area over there serves about 300,000 uh, residents around the Taipo community. Um, the objective of our renovation was number one, to offer the community a more pleasant shopping experience. Number two, it's to preserve um, a little bit of Hong Kong's Chinese cultural traditions. Again, you know, before we embarked on this uh, program, we actually did a stakeholder engagement exercise to find out what the current tenants or the currents at that time felt in the wet market. What do they want improved? What do they not like? Um, the tenancy rate was quite low. Uh, people stopped going to the wet market simply for the same reasons I mentioned earlier, you know, the hygiene um, and, and the environment type issues. Um, but it took us about two years to do a complete stakeholder engagement. It wasn't enough for us to just find out what people here want to do. We actually went around the world to find out what better, um, what other cities do. A good kind of analogy is um, when we talk about this, Think about it, if someone decides to ask you out on a date, okay, and they say, let's take you to a wet market in Hong Kong, how would you feel? You know, probably not very attracted to that idea, okay, but if you do this in a western city, okay, let's say Toronto, San Francisco, and um, someone asks you out on a date to go to a wet market, or a fresh market, a farmer's market, it's actually very commonplace. So the concept is, how do we make a fresh market a, a, in Hong Kong a place where people would want to go. People feel happy going there. Uh, so that was part of the scoping exercise, you know, under the stakeholder engagement. We went around to find out what, what other people did. We totally budgeted around 95 million Hong Kong dollars. Renovation started in June 2010 and finished around 2011. The biggest change to the wet market itself was looking at the layout. If you look on the left-hand side, this is a typical layout of any wet market in Hong Kong. Um, straight cord, uh, corridors, um, you know, the stalls are all about the same size, uh, not much different. On the right hand side is the new layout of the Tai Yu wet market. If you stand at any junction or any part of the corridor, you can see the storefront of every single uh, store down that alley or down that way. The purpose of that is so that, number one, it helps our customers do, it helps our tenants do better business because customers can see what is down each street or uh, each, each corridor. Um, you can see that the storefronts are actually wider now. You don't have that simple square design. Everyone has the same, same uh, length of uh, storefronts. You have different angles to promote more area for people to display their products. What we want to do is design a wet market for, wet market for a new century. Okay, these are pictures of how it was, was before. Again, common scenes that you don't see. What we have now are wider corridors, open and uncluttered um, shop, shop fronts. The floor is now no longer wet. So we may, that's why we now call them fresh markets as opposed to wet markets. Um, a lot of thought was put into this, simply because, uh, similar to the theme of this conference, access walkability. One common problem with wet markets is that when you're trying to buy groceries, a lot of people are pulling their cart. Um, it's difficult to get around. It's difficult to push through the crowds when you need to get something, and everybody buys the same buy food at the same time. So what we did, we actually widened the corridors. Number one, that helps out with the, tra uh, the trolleys that people pull, but more importantly, it actually makes it easier for people with disabilities or wheelchairs to access the facility. It's not very common that you see wheelchairs in a wet market, but you do so in Taiyu wet market. We actually spent quite a bit of time and money um, and, and uh, effort into making sure that this property was barrier-free accessible. Uh, on the exterior side, it looks a little bit different. Um, again, the pictures will show, on, actually on the right-hand side pictures, uh, these are the after photos. Uh, there are actually more barrier-free uh, facilities available in these, in these areas. I mentioned earlier that our wet market initiatives is not necessarily just to improve the interior. It's not just about making it better, but it's about going beyond the design. What other features, what other qualities did we add into these wet markets? Well, Taiyun wet market is probably the first wet market in Hong Kong to have a cooking studio as well. You go to a wet market to buy food. What if you don't know what to cook that day? Well, we've installed a, a cooking studio so that shoppers can find new dishes. Um, introduce the best and finest ingredients for that day, and we have cooking classes hosted by celebrity chefs. 
we've actually helped, sustaining to help to sustain tenant business. Not only are we providing a better environment for them to do business, but we're actually helping the, the business be passed down to other people. We've, we do have um, tenants who have now passed their business down onto their children, and it's sustaining that business for younger generations. Younger generations are taking over the family business and um, helping, helping out the wet market develop and making a better environment. Businesses are expanding as well. We also work on enhancing community. In the video and in these pictures, you can also see that we have a program called the Thai Yun Ambassadors, where we actually hire local people, people who live in that, uh, in that area, give them a job for, for, um, give them a, job for uh, a few days a week. They're all part-time, but they understand what's going on around the area. More importantly, they know people in that area. So when shoppers come into the wet market, they feel as if it's a community. That's what we're trying to develop, a more community type feel. We've also worked on different greening initiatives. Okay? Um, one of the biggest public spaces that we have are the rooftops of our shopping centers or the rooftop areas and the, the open areas underneath housing authority um, places. Now, usually those are concrete, flat concrete terraces or areas with nothing on them. Not very, vis not very aesthetically pleasing, um, not very fun to walk around. What we've actually done at Taiyun is install a rooftop uh, garden. We've also installed uh, playgrounds for children as well. So these have both community and environmental type of initiatives. How do we measure success? Well, because this is the first revitalization of a wet market in our portfolio, it was difficult to measure success. We didn't know what, uh, what would happen. But we found out that after we've done this, more, most stall owners have reported an increase in sales turnover, and they've also employed, employed additional staff. The number of daily shoppers has doubled. Local residents um, are being drawn towards this wet market simply because it's more clean, it's more hygienic, it's more friendly, um, and it's more accessible. Also, you'll notice that we were the winner of the Environmental Excellence Awards for Asian CSR Awards 2011. That shows us that you know, we are on the right track. This is the first of uh, hopefully many wet market revitalization projects. So finally, moving forward, what are we going to do with this? Well, we're going to continue to refine the uh, fresh market revitalization, revitalization process. You know, find out other ways to improve what we've already improved and bring this to other shopping centers and other uh, wet markets throughout Hong Kong. Um, we're also looking into areas to, into ways to collaborate with other partners because the wet market concept or the revitalization process, we did a lot of that. You know, the design, um, working, uh, working internally, the, the architecture and so forth. But we want to get more opinion from the community. What do you want to see? You know, how else can we improve the design and, and go from there? So we're looking into ways to work with universities, maybe schools of architectures, or even Hong Kong Design Institute to see what other possibilities we can have. And that is close to my time, and that's all I have for today. Thanks.